Welcome to the KASAT two-way installation video. First, verify that the contents of your two-way kit are complete. Please find the list on the instructions page. The transceiver or TRIA. The modem with Ethernet cable. Verify you have all the necessary tools for the installation. You can now start to assemble the antenna. Take the disc with A pointing upwards. Insert a coach bolt through the disc and secure the elevation azimuth head with a washer, split washer and nut. Now secure the plate and head with four coach bolts and washers and nuts as shown. Spin the head so that the notch is at 90 degrees then tighten all four nuts. Take the identical mask clamps and position as shown. Use flange nuts for the mask clamps. The next stage is to secure the antenna to the elevation azimuth head with five coach bolts and five flange nuts. Tighten all five nuts and be very careful not to deform the dish in any way. Now, construct the two arms by first securing the TRIA support plate with four long coach bolt washers and split washers with normal nuts. Make sure that the threaded holes at the other end of the arms are in the correct position for the threaded holes on the elevation and azimuth head. The yellow warning sign gives a good indication on one arm. Here are some examples of available masts. Please choose as strong a mast as possible, for example, with a 60 mm diameter tube. The mast should be secured with at least four M8 raw bolts or four M8 bolts with plastic sleeves, depending on the type of wall. Weight loading for non-penetrating mounts should be according to local conditions. The antenna weighs over 14 kilos when complete, so we recommend installing it in two parts. First, mount the dish on the mast, then secure in place with the mast clamps. Now, slot the two arms into place as shown. Fix the arm securely in place with four short bolts and washers. To secure the earth cable supplied, Bolt one end of the azimuth and elevation head with a serrated washer scoring the paint. This scoring allows a connection to the metal and therefore a good bond. To allow two-way to communicate with the satellite, you must have two parameters to point the antenna and the spot color to program the modem.
The azimuth angle is in reference to north and corresponds to movement right and left of the antenna. The elevation angle is in reference to the ground and corresponds to up and down movements. To identify the azimuth, elevation and spot color that corresponds to your location, you must go to finder.twayinstall.com. On this website, you are able to identify your location via three methods. First, using a map. The website then calculates the elevation and azimuth angles and your spot color. This color configures the circular polarization and the modem. You can also use GPS coordinates to calculate the angles and spot color configuration. Finally, you can also use the installation address as well. This application works for all smartphones and is also available as an iPhone app on the Apple Store. There's an offline version as well. Now you have all your parameters for your line of sight, you can start choosing your installation position. With your compass, identify the azimuth angle the antenna must face. You must have a clear line of sight to the satellite position with no obstacles such as buildings or trees. A person should be prevented from getting within a distance equal to the diameter of the antenna. You should also have approximately a 10 degree margin between your line of sight angle and any obstructions. The final criteria for choosing a good installation position is the maximum cable distance between the modem and antenna. The maximum distance is 50 meters, but can be longer depending on the type of cable. When cabling the antenna, leave a service loop of about 70 centimeters to enable the replacement of connectors. At the point of entry to the building, put in a drip loop. When drilling the hole in the exterior wall, drill down at a slight angle to prevent water penetration. For exterior connectors, always use compression connectors if possible. Strip away the inner and outer insulation to expose the center pin and dielectric. Make sure there's no connection between the shield and the center pin. Push on the compression connector so that the dielectric is flush with the bezel part of the connector. Cut the center pin about 3 mm above the connector. Ensure there's no earthing tress touching the center pin. Then compress the connector.